Okay, we have a list. It's a short list, but there's a lot to do with this short list. I'll kind of read them off just so you guys get an idea. It's not in any particular order, but it kind of is. Clean axle, which means there's paint on there that we still need to get off. A little bit more metal we gotta grind off. Primer area for truss. So, where the truss goes on, clean that area, primer it because we won't be able to get under it once we start tacking and welding stuff, which is important because we don't want to rust. Mock and weld truss and then fully weld. So after we primer, like I just said, mock it up, get it tacked and then fully weld it on. After that, hopefully we'll get to the arm links and measuring the lengths we have an idea as to what we're going to do for that. We're just going to use our old setup and that should make it super simple to figure out the length of the arms. And upper link brackets. So that is basically just getting the geometry right for the upper link brackets to mount and weld here. So we want to get the right geometry and then build the upper and lower links. So once we have the length that we want and we have these brackets where we want, then uh, we can build the upper and lower links with the Barnes kits. Then we can bolt them in. So hopefully you guys see us get through all of this. We should be able to, but we'll see. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. So we'll, um, one step at a time, we'll hopefully we'll cross each thing off the list as we go, and at the end of the day, we'll have it all taken care of. Oh yeah, let's go. We also have to weld these on. These are the spring purchase for the axle, and then these are the shock mounts. Definitely can't forget those, because we need those to go on that. getting this prepped for uh, primer. So I'm just gonna use a mild solvent to wipe all this stuff down so we're not worried about any greases or dirt and oil not allowing the primer to stick fully. We're only gonna primer the area that we're not gonna be able to reach when we're weld or after we weld. So yeah, last thing we want to do is put this truss on there and have the underside of the truss and the top of the axle and all the areas under the truss rust. So this is pretty much the best or only way to get this prepped and painted. So we're going to use the uh, Eastwood 2K primer and this is actually some paint we've had that we need to use up because they now have a 2K primer that has an endless shelf life, which is good. The problem with this is that if we mix it, we have to use this within about maybe eight hours or so. So just because we have a small project, I'm going to go ahead and just use this up. We will get some 2K primer that does not have the uh, shelf life. And that way we can just use what we need and we're done. So in order to activate this particular uh, product, we're going to go ahead and puncture this. And that allows the two part to mix inside the can. Okay guys, we got the axle inside or underneath the Jeep. Everything is where we want it. Centered, back and forth, side to side. We got the pinion angle where we want it. And uh, we marked the lines where we need to grind down some of the primer again then to get the axle truss tacked on there. And then from there, we'll start uh, getting the geometry right for the two top uh, four link brackets, as you see right there. And then uh, we'll be able to tack those on. I think what we'll do next after we get those tacked on is start getting our links figured out, get everything roughly fitted. And then when we're happy with it, we'll pull everything out and then get it fully welded, put it back in.
Okay guys, things are going really well. We have everything tacked in as you just saw. The upper link mac brackets, trusses all mocked up and tacked in. So next we're gonna be doing is these new coil brackets for the axle side. We had to take the other ones off because they just weren't in the right location. Um, so we're gonna lower this down and then take my springs, put them in, and then kind of see, well, we have to build these first and then we'll put them in, mock them up, see where they need to go exactly, tack them in, roll the axle out, and then get everything fully welded up out here. Okay, so we have the coil bucket perches, whatever you want to call them, mounted to the axle or tack. And what we're gonna do now is put all the weight onto the uh, axle and where the springs are to allow us to figure out where our shock brackets are gonna go. It's a new day, we're gonna be working on the Jeep again. First thing we gotta do is take everything out, get the axle out, finish welding everything, get the links made, and then uh, once the links are made, we can put the axle in and it's pretty much done other than paint. And then we can start working on the front, figure out a track bar and steering. And then the Jeep is pretty much ready to go and be driven. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. So here we go. Axle is fully welded. Everything is finished. Um, I don't weld every day. I wish I did, so these would be prettier. But uh, they're okay, and they'll hold, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. So, um, could have paid someone to do this, but I'd rather you do it know, myself. I, and it's you more fun. And but you don't learn by other people doing it for you. Exactly. We're gonna start working on the links and uh, what we did, why we used my old Clayton kit was because it gave us the opportunity to figure out the measurements of all the arms so we can measure these and just basically recreate them with, that is not it, those are the three link arms. Yeah. Uh, with this DOM right here. So we can basically cut everything to size, weld our, are they called bung ends? Yeah, the, the, the bungs. Yeah, weld them in, get everything situated, and the arms will be done. These are the lower links. They're a little bit more heavy duty, mainly because they're probably gonna be taking the brunt of uh, rocks, whatever you're, you're rock rolling or wheeling on. Um, these joints, these enduro joints are badass, and they're rebuildable, so five years from now, 10 years from now, whatever, however long it takes for these to go bad or break or whatever, you can just take this completely apart. There's a little C-clip right here, take it out, and then you can replace everything inside, which is really cool. Um, so we, we're we gonna be using these all in the rear and in the front. There's left hand and right hand, so you gotta make sure you get that right. Would not be good if you tried that wrong. Um, but yeah, these basically, we're probably gonna have to clean these up, right? Yeah, and we wanna definitely do uh right hand thread on one and a left hand thread on the other so if you adjust it you can turn them in and out okay, so these are pretty much i don't want to hit that in but that'll go in there we can bevel this edge and then uh put a nice weld around there it matches the same diameter as this piece of dom so this is the one that's going to go on here and then it's going to go on the link or you're going to turn the link in and that goes inside there and then you're done that's it.
right. If we had known it was that easy, we would have been doing our own links oh, I know. all along. Yeah, and I mean, everything fits so well. I mean, and this metal is high quality steel. It's yeah. welding really well. Not worrying about cleaning it a ton other than what, what's on it to protect it. Yeah. From getting like. rusty, but other than yeah. this stuff is welding really nice and everything's fitting together really well. So really happy with this kit so far. Okay, we've started on the upper links and we're gonna get those finished. Uh, we're already halfway done with the first one, get the, fin the second one finished, and then we're gonna probably throw the axle back in, make sure everything fits well, tear it back out, paint it, all that good stuff, and then that's finished. And then we'll move on to the front. But uh, yeah, we're gonna finish up the links now. Guys, we are all finished with the rear. The rear is in temporarily because we have to get it painted, of course, but it's in, the arms are done. Um, it's awesome. I'm really happy with it. Here it is. Check it out. I think it looks really good. It's really clean. I'm really happy with it. Everything is welded on and in place. There's no go backs or do overs except for these because I'm not happy with them. But uh, yeah, all we have left is figuring out the sway bar. Uh, eventually I'll go to an aftermarket, but for now we're running this, uh, the stock one on my TJ. So we're just gonna make some brackets for it to go right here. Just out of some like square tubing, we'll cut it in half and make like a C looking piece with bolt holes. And then that'll be it for the rear, doing steering and uh, track bar stuff in the front for the next video. And then hopefully in the next video, we'll be driving it, running and driving. Even though it's already running, but driving. Yeah. yeah. And then after that front video, we have gas tank. And then we have another one where we're gonna be cutting a lot more stuff. So you gotta stay tuned for that. And the good thing is, is that even though you have a different yoke on your rear pinion we were able to use the 1310 1350 u-joints u-joints so we got those already installed they're ready to go we just have to drop the drive shaft back in and we should be good yeah be eventually good. i'll be getting an adams drive shaft to run in the rear I already have one in the front but uh it'll be nice to have some stronger uh drive shafts front and rear but uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video the rear is finally done axle swap number two isn't complete, but it's 90% there. Is this actual swap? Number two. Final? Yeah, All right. nothing bigger unless it's a Dana 80 or something like that. Yeah. I'm kidding. Would, unless someone wants to donate one, I'll take a Dana 80. 80. Dana 80. Yeah, um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. If you are subscribed, and subscribe now. Hit the thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, thumbs down it. I don't care. We're just having fun. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.